One of the first things that people are going to, to notice as we look at the rack is it's a fully welded rack. So where have we come to to get to a, a fully welded rack over what we see in the market today? Well, it's fair to say that the forefront of our design the whole way through has been strength to make sure it's strong. There's no better way to get a good, strong joint than welding, so that's what we've done. You will notice these welds uh, are very similar, or they're identical. ALB have actually invested in a brand new robot welding cell to do these, these racks. We've got one cell dedicated to base rack. So what that means is we've got great repeatability in these welds, so every rack you can have the same welds. Also challenge the number of welds we have on these racks to try and get everyone the same was really important to us. Another advantage we've got of uh, the robots is the welds are flat. Uh, really important to us for people carrying things like sheets of plaster. You don't want to have lumps of weld uh, kick them in. So keeping those welds flat was, was forefront of what we tried to do. So obviously another obvious point here is that it's a pre-assembled rack. Absolutely. Uh, speed of fitting is a really important thing. So what we've tried to do and what we have done is that you take us out of the box you put the fitting kit on it, you put it on the car, your job's done. The other real obvious one is obviously cross beams. We're going across the car as opposed to up and down. Yeah, that was an interesting one. Uh, we spent a lot of time on this at the start of the project. A lot of discussions, do the beams run that way or do the beams run that way? Lots of talk about strength, about noise, about fitments, whole raft of opinions. So what we ended up doing, we built both. Uh, we built one with the rack slats going that way and one with the beams going this way, and we tested them. Uh, it didn't take long to find out that cross beams are the way to go. The first obvious thing we found was that with the beams running this way, the first time we put a bit of timber on the top, bang, we hit the roof. Not an ideal setup. Other things with our rack is that it was strength and height, two really important things just to look at. Running the beams sideways, uh, we can get better strength with less weight and less height. So were we to run the beams this way, we'd have to increase the section or we'd have to put in cross beams neither which we wanted to do because that was against our objective of keeping these racks as close to the roof as possible. So what do our customers have to expect in sizes? So for launch we've got four sizes. We're running three wide racks which are 1285 wide and we're running a, a narrower rack at the 1155. They're similar sort of size to our current racks um, and it's worth noting that when we talk width we're talking about the usable width of the rack from here to here. We're talking three lengths for launch we're talking a 15.45, we're talking an 18.35, and we're talking a 21.25. Close behind, we've got cab racks coming. So we've got two more racks, which are only going to be 12.55 long. Cool. So a total of six racks will be available in the very near future. Four on launch. Uh, as you said, one's about 100 mil narrower than the wider version. And from what I understand, every time we add a new beam, so we're going from a six beam, a seven beam, an eight beam, we will eventually have a five beam, and each beam adds. 290 mils. Yeah, correct. So a, a key part to the design and our accessories, which we'll talk about soon, is this pitch between the beams, and that's constant. So every time we make a new rack, we add a beam. So you say our cab racks will be five, and this is a six, and then we go seven and eight. And again, 290 mils. 